we carry on with our explanation for chapter two, and we have reached section 10. And in section 10, we will take, talk about derailment mechanisms. And sometimes people are not familiar with the word derailment. Derailment means that the train is going, uh, has gone out of the rail. So it, it, it might be a cause of accident, or it, it, it can be the accident itself. So derailment mechanisms, when we talk about derailment, we talk about railway accidents. So without further ado, let's start to have a look at the course content, at the section content. So this is section 10. We will be discussing derailment mechanisms on plane line. We'll be discussing derailment mechanism and switches and crossings on switches and crossings. Also, we'll be discussing derailment mechanisms on other, uh, uh, on, in, other, in other occasions. So some of them because of wind, some of them because of load or uh, shipment that is the train is carrying. So let us have a look at derailment on plane line. So there are many types of derailment on plane lines. One of the famous ones is collision. And this is a very rare accident to have uh, two trains hitting each other. This means this is this is this is most probably a result of a signaling or train control system or a train control interaction failure. So either the driver did not interact with with the signaling system, or it, the train control system was not uh, was not uh, had a, had a fault or had a problem. So this will have a, a collision, a head to head collision. Also, another type of derailment that can happen on a plane line is component failures. One of the components of the train has failed, and this has resulted in a derailment. Gauge spread. So if the track geometry is not, uh, uh, is not in a good condition, you might have those gauges, the distance between two rails. This is the gauge. And the gauge, the standard gauge is 1435, 1435 millimeters. And this is something that you need to remember. So the standard gauge, you might have in a poor track condition, you might have that, that actually the distance between the two rails has gone much more than the standard gauge, which will result in a train derailment. Also, sometimes the track conditions are so poor that you have these cyclic tops or you have these faults or you have a rail break, that will result in a derailment. Flange climb, which is the wheel flange, and you should remember the wheel flange. This is the the dipped part, the part where uh, the the cylinder, uh, the the wider cylinder part. So if you assume the wheel is two cylinder, one wider than the other, so this one is the wider. So the bottom of that is called the flange, and if the flange has climbed on top of the rail, this might re might result on a derailment. So track buckle also. Well, one of the reasons, and the, the, by that we mean that the, the, the track itself has a, some kind of um, a, a twist, and that twist is because of heat or because of uh, failure or because of other reasons. So the alignment is not well uh, maintained. So, but it's not only the track or the rail are the causes of uh, derailments on plain line. There are some derailments because of uh, uh, weather or because of, for example, you can see the embankment wash away here. Uh, it was a rainy day before this day and the, the water, the, the, the flow water has managed to wash out the embankment. And this has resulted in an accident that might have uh, resulted in few fate, uh, in few deaths. So you should be, you should understand that derailment mechanisms is also part of. Uh, <laughs> you should understand that derailment mechanisms also can result in a <laughs> in an uh, in a, uh, can be a result of a landslide of an embankment wash away or because of the weather of weather conditions. So the other day in Scotland, that they, there was an accident because of landslide. So a few rocks fell from a mountain to the to the tracks, and it affected the service, and it resulted in uh, I think in one person death or few deaths. So derailment mechanisms on switches and crossings. It's not only on plane lines. Sometimes you have it on switches and crossings, and switches and crossings are are this part which allow the train to move from one track to another. So it can happen as a flange climb. 
can happen as a split switch, a switch reversal, or crossing derailment. And crossing derailment, this kind of crossing, you have part of the track going through a, a road, and uh, one of the cars or one of the uh, trucks, or maybe uh, the train can hit a road user, uh, can result in an accident. So this is a car that is being hit by a train. It's not clear the crossing here, but here the crossing is clear that the train will be going in, uh, in the middle of a road or will be crossing a road. And we call this level crossings. Uh, mainly switches and crossings happen at hand operated sites. If you have, for example, if this site was operated by hands, if they uh, make some kind of barriers here by hand, now everything is automated, this would result in a failure. The other one is during facing moves. If the switch is going through, if the train is facing uh, the switch, it might result in a derailment. Other accidents, can, uh, other accidents can happen because of wind or because of shipment or, for, for example, this accident in China happened because of wind. There was another accident in Japan that because, happened because of crosswind, the, cross, the wind that is coming uh, on the uh, uh, perpendicular to the uh, train body. And this can also uh, be another reason for derailment or uh, the load, the shipment that is being carried by the train ca can be not evenly distributed or might result in a, in a derailment. There are other odd things you, and sometimes other safety derailments, but you should be knowing that when a derailment happen, an accident investigation is made. This is a big event in the railway world and uh, an investigation is being conducted with a proper reporting and uh, proper uh, failure analysis and understanding what was the root cause of the accident. So this was the end of chapter two, the end of uh, Rawlings, the Rawlings thought chapter. I hope you enjoyed it, you enjoy it, you enjoyed it. So we will be looking at uh, the electrification and traction systems in the coming chapter. And we will be looking forward to for uh, your contribution and your comments. Let your friends know about the course if they are interested in the railway world. This will be a very interesting, a very, a very strong introduction for them in this field. Have a great evening and we'll see you in the next chapter.